I, I also noticed on your website there was a playlist of, of songs from the 70s, or there's a, re a reference to it. Um, so I'm curious about your writing process. Uh, what kind of sh um, influences do you use to sort of create that, uh, that texture, and what, what, what are the songs on that playlist? The playlist came about um, someone at my publisher, Algonquin, said, hey, I wanna, I'm sending out the book in galleys to all the salespeople around the country. I'd like to send a CD as well to capture the, the, the time. And there's Sly and the Family Stone and Springsteen. And we're talking New York in the 70s, New York, New Jersey. Springsteen, B David Bowie, uh, Lou Reed. Um, uh, who else is on? Donna Summers on there. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you listen to these songs, and if you were around then and listen to the radio, it takes you right back to those days, whether you're in Walnut <laughs> Creek or Times Square. Right. And... Um, so we put it together, and um, it was kind of cool. I was in, I've been interviewed. J Peep Show came out on June 1st, so a lot of people have asked about it. And it's uh, uh, I'm a very, very big music fan, and um, I, I am influenced by music. Certainly, um, emotion is easily found in it for me, and the way that it's used in film and soundtracks uh, to create mood. And so um, it, was, it was a fun task for me. Um, getting inspired and getting in the chair, what gets me going, um, since we're sitting in this beautiful library, I actually wrote both books in two different libraries. Oh, great. Which yeah. libraries? The UCSF Medical School Library in San Francisco on Parnassus, a place where they don't ask for ID. It's extremely clean, wonderful views. And that just became my office, and I had my favorite cubicle, and sometimes there'd be a medical student in it, and I'd have to rough him up, joking. And then um, the next one, Peep Show, I wrote... Um, on campus at Berkeley, the Doe Library, which is a beautiful, high ceiling, like museum sort of, sort of building. Mm -hmm. um, so um, many, many days walking through the stacks to my various cubicles in, in libraries. Uh, jumping back to the playlist, your brother is the filmmaker, uh, Zach Braff, yeah. uh, who had a huge success um, with the film Garden State, which he wrote and directed. Um, that film uh, had an enormous Subsidiary, subsidiary, which is was its soundtrack, a right. collection of songs. Um, did you uh, were you talking with Zach about putting those songs together? How did that come uh, that come together? Do you know? Um, Zach uh, had written that script before he became the star of Scrubs, mm -hmm. and um, how Hollywood works is if you get if you become the star of a TV show, there's going to be more doors open to you. So he took the same script and started to shop it around, and then he was getting nibbles and. Uh, as it was unfolding, he always had certain songs going in his head as he wrote that script. And I think that's the way he writes. Sometimes he even puts the songs in the script. Uh, because, again, the, uh, what, are we go what, what emotion are we capturing here? So much work can be done in a scene as opposed to writing a scene in a novel because you have the music going. I think of uh, The Graduate using uh, Simon and Garfunkel. Uh, it's just Simon and Garfunkel throughout, uh, but subtly throughout. And I think that um, Garden State is very, very successful in using that. And there's nobody who doesn't love the Garden State soundtrack. It won a, it won a Grammy in the same year that the uh, uh, Ray Charles um, soundtrack was up. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Zach's never picked up a musical instrument in his life, but he has a Grammy. I've held it. And... Um, Interesting. He made one heck of a mix, right? Right. And <laughs> that's all it was. It was a mix, and then he applied it to his film so beautifully. So that's one of his talents. With uh, Simon and Garfunkel on the soundtrack. Simon too. and Garfunkel. I thought of Good Will Hunting as well with um, Elliot Smith used subtly throughout. Um, so important in film, and uh, if it's done well, right. it can really turn things around. That's the key. It the has to be done well. well the the well-selected playlist mm -hmm. that suits the film, and then there's... Julia Roberts trying on dresses in Pretty Woman with Roy Orbison just layered over it. There it is. You know, which is, it's a different experience. Right. Um, having had the success uh, that you've had with your novels and your sibling having success um, in the film industry, how have you complemented each other or shared those successes as well? We're brothers? very good friends and um, have been for a very long time. Um, and so it's always a matter of, hey, will you read this? And... Um, we, we share, we, sh we do that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think it, in time we'll be doing it more. Um, I, I am interested in screen and have been, um, again, when doors open, it's kind of like um, possibility happens. And so there's crossover 
certainly with um, writing scenes and writing dialogues. So we have an older brother who's in the, in, in the writing world as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, your first, first book, The Unthinkable Thoughts of Jacob Green, has been optioned for a film. Yes. What's the, uh, what's the status with that? Uh, from it w came out in 04, and there were nibbles early on, and uh, a filmmaker named Michael Greenspan was, uh, had a 20-minute had film at the time and maybe a commercial, and I took a look, and I liked the way he shot and worked with kids, and uh, he actually used original music in his short, uh, and so I said, we started to talk, and long story short, months go by, and he adapted Jacob Green, he adapted The Unthinkable Thoughts of Jacob Green, my novel, into screen. 93 pages it seemed to all be there mm -hmm. you know how do you how do you take certain things and make them and put them into a cinematic uh, setting and he did a really nice job with a writing partner of his and he uh, optioned the uh, we're all s we're sort of set but uh, money's a, a thing and sure. he, he shot a first film with Adrian Brody he shot a, a first feature film with Adrian Brody and because I say Adrian Brody Oscar winner that could feed the next and he could get money from the same people so sure. it's a passion of his. I'm I'm moving on, and he's going to call me when it w when it might go down. You It'll know? be interesting to see. Can you jump back in time to 2000? For that was your first published novel. Yes. Um, as a writer who has aspirations to get that book on a library shelf and and have it in the bookstore, yeah. can you talk about the satisfaction of of finding a publisher and seeing that book become a reality? Well, I think to to accomplish at this level, you're going to there's a lot of rejection to and and fighting and getting back on the horse as it were to find yourself in a position to s to have a publisher call you and talk about making a deal and there's a it's a long road to creating something that has no promise and sitting in the chair every day and you know walking up to the UCSF Medical School Library and kind of crossing your fingers. Mm -hmm. Your parents want to know what it is you're doing, you know. <laughs> So there's great reward in that day when they say that, and um, my books have done really, really well in libraries. I wouldn't have been able to predict that because I didn't know if I was, if I, if I had, there's some, there's some raw truth in it and some adult language, and libraries have been absolutely great to me, and the books are always out, I hear, and I, I, I love coming to them, and, and, uh, and, and that book and, and Peep Show as well, but, but, but the first one especially was extremely well received right here in the East Bay. Yeah. Thanks uh, especially to Lynn Carey and yes. the Contra Costa Times um, uh, Book Club. Can you talk a little bit about working um, yeah. with Lynn and, and, and the reaction you had going out to, um, to read in front of 800 people at the, yes. at the Regional Center for the Arts? Right. Uh, Lynn Carey um, was sort of like the Oprah of uh, the East Bay mm -hmm. and wonderful person. Everybody loves her and she somehow gathered 800 of her closest friends uh, every year for years. They, they did it at the Dean Lesher uh, Theater. And uh, I was able to, I was invited for The Unthinkable Thoughts of Jacob Green. And I walked out there like I do at bookstores, but there were 800 uh, eager book fans. And um, so that opened things up. And I found myself uh, pictured huge in the Contra Costa Times with sunglasses on, summer reads. And so Lynn Carey, just very, very good to me. And then I did it again. And uh, I took a while with Peep Show, uh, my second novel. Second, uh, sophomore projects are, are tricky. And uh, so I missed the Lynn Carey boat because she's in Singapore. But um, she, they, they, there's, a, there's a lot of book lovers around here. And, mm -hmm. and partly building a library like this uh, helps see that true sure. truth. You received wonderful attention for Peep Show uh, in the reviews as well as Jacob Green. On your Wikipedia page, um, it's mentioned that Jacob Green uh, reviewers um, drew correlations to you and J.D. Salinger. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of pressure is that to, <laughs> <laughs> to take on? And how did you take that uh, yeah. response? When it first came out, I heard that. And um, it was as, is as surreal as any of, the, of any of it unfolding as being real. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are a player. Yes, you're, you have an Amazon ranking. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you're in libraries. So as those things became real, then a comment like that is uh, a huge honor. I went and read Catcher in the Rye again after that and thought, yeah, God, I, that book meant a lot to me. But mm -hmm. there, it wasn't sitting next to me when I wrote Jacob Green. Right. Um, but I, I'm doing that as I'm teaching now. I've picked a book, um, a book called J Road to Los Angeles by an, an author named John Fonte, who's long gone. The um, book was written in the 30s. And it's very Salinger-esque and very Catcher in the Rye-esque. And there are things that, must, that just found I absorbed when I was reading it years ago. 
and there's you can see some of the vo some of the voice coming through in in my own way. Um, I write about sort of precocious, unheard young people, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, or I did. I'm currently not writing <laughs> from that point of view anymore, hmm. but um, influenced by people who ro wrote true wrote characters that were very true. Uh, Salinger's characters are unreliable narrators in a sense. They're talking to the reader, but the reader begins to question whether or not the protagonist is actually telling the truth. And loneliness can be evoked through that. So Salinger was an expert at it. Well, it's fascinating to sort of deconstruct the DNA of an author mm -hmm. and, e and, and even find those things that are maybe unconscious in your, yeah. in your backstory. Yeah. But uh, this has been really, really interesting, and congratulations on the success with Peep Show and, and for writing such a kind of a, a, a deliciously textured book. I, I really enjoyed going through it. Um, Joshua Braff, it's been very interesting. Thanks for coming on Get Lit. Thanks for watching Get Lit. Uh, we'll be back soon with more local authors, and please tune in for that.